The Aflac part, though, I bet. Not as well as you do. <laughs> You're a man of many talents. Total yards, 198 to 104, second down here. Abdul Khalid comes to the right side, launches one. There's a turnaround pattern, and it's short. Let's look again by Oregon. They send four. And there's a diving catch made by Hosack, Aaron Hosack, number 84. Ball and play action, you get big plays in your passing game. Hosack was the possession guy, but Ellerson was the big play guy, and they don't have that guy right now. Well, that one's not for the highlight reel. I think Joe Ainsley was uh, intended to pull on that play. Mm -hmm. He was bound to determine that that one was on one instead <laughs> of two. <laughs> Dead ball, false start on the offense, five-yard penalty, first down. Now, a couple guys moved. Joe Quinn moved, too. Abdul Kalik was trying to change the play. First and 15, 14-7 ball game. Here's the reverse to Barber heading to his left. Gets around the corner. Finnessy, number 31, over to make the tackle. Boy, what a block by Jared Postumus. Watch at the top left of your screen. You're going to see Jared Postumus, number 81, block Marley Tucker, number 23, right there. Just came in, and Tucker had no idea where he was coming from. 14-7 game. Sammy Parker just caught the go-ahead touchdown, and Stephen Moore walking off unaided, but uh, apparently injured. Rodney Woods replaces him in the lineup now at the cornerback position opposite Justin Finnessy. Second and 11. They'll well, move it right up the middle. This is Lawrence Moroni, the freshman. Second carry of the game. Pretty good job, job by Abdul Khalik identifying a weakness in the Oregon run defense that time on second down. Oregon was trying to shift over into that area, but they didn't get guys moved in time, and they're able to stick that run in there for a pretty decent game. Hassan Abdul Khalik not as effective passing as his counterpart Clemens has been. He will throw on this play, maybe. Yes, he does. Come back route, Hosack. They got the first down at the 39-yard line of Oregon. A really nice job by Hosack coming back to his quarterback. I thought Abdul Khalik was going to take off for a minute. Did a nice job of getting outside. You know, this was a timing throw that didn't happen right away. So he gets outside. And Hosek does a nice job of moving with the scrambling quarterback. You teach wide receivers, if you see your quarterback in trouble, move and uncover and then move back to the football. Rodney Woods on coverage could catch up to Hosek for the first down. Senior from Ontario, California, had a couple of years in junior college ball before going back to the Midwest. And again, they fake the reverse, flip it out. This is Thomas Tape, number 44, makes the catch. David Martin with the tackle. We talked about this Minnesota offense, how well they ran the football, but for the year, they averaged 501 yards per game, and the only other team in Big Ten history that had a better offense was the Penn State team in 1994 that had a bunch of NFL guys, Gary Collins and Kajana Carter, Kyle Brady. I mean, they averaged 512 yards a game, and Minnesota was the second best ever in the Big Ten this year on offense. And 293 yards came on the ground. There's the uh, attempted sweep to the right side. Good pursuit as Maroney is uh, tackled for no gain. Now here are the all-time Big Ten ranks. You see that Minnesota second player injured and going on. Look at this list of things. <laughs> How about number three? Yeah, that's, that's Einstein <laughs> proposes the theory. <laughs> that's amazing. Relativity. Oh my goodness. University of Chicago was the NCAA champs. Uh, somebody named Amos Alonzo Stagg, I think, was involved in that. Giants defeated the Philadelphia A's. Injured player was Devin Long. He heads over to the uh, Oregon bench. Third and five. Minnesota two of two on. Third downs on this drive. Hand off to Maroney. Left tackle. 
He's pushed backwards, but that'll be close for the first down. That was Marley Tucker, number 23, with a nice tackle. And a nice call by Tony Peterson and Mitch Browning. I think Oregon was thinking pass here. They had him spread out, and they stuck the little run in there with Maroney. It was a good tackle at the end of the play, but after the first down was picked up. They changed him up a little bit with the running play on that third down. So the third third down conversion of this drive. Posthumous, the tight end, goes tight to the right. And Matt Spaeth is uh, on the near side. Here's the option. Abdul Khalid to the 23-yard line. Tackle made by Keith Lewis, number 16. Under five minutes to go in a briskly played first half between Minnesota and Oregon. Now the rushing yard, 72 now for the Gophers. Passing edge uh, held by the Oregon Ducks. You know, it, it, even though the Big Ten Conference has changed over the years, I mean, it's not just a three-yard and a cloud of dust conference anymore. This game is still kind of the classic Big Ten, Pac-10 matchup. you got to stop the Big Ten team's running game, and you got to defend the Pac-10 team's passing game. That's what this game comes down to. Marion Barber, the third. Down to the 20-yard line. See Rick Riley's column in Sports Illustrated about that a couple of weeks ago. I did not. You did not? No. Well, then you've got no point of reference for this. <laughs> <laughs> I heard Dick Enberg give him a pop on the air Sunday, so I thought I'd do the same. That was a third down run to the 18-yard line. Actually, we're in the mountain time zone, not. But this is the foot. The very end of the Rocky Mountain chain. Yeah. No, you knew that. Yeah. Todd's thinking, where's he going with this stuff? <laughs> Fourth down. I liked your story about the mountain before the game with all the people on the mountain. Oh, the mountain in the uh, left-hand corner just uh, out of view. There were probably 50 people on that mountain. We'll talk about that in a bit. Here's fourth down. Fourth and one. Barber is the eye back. Quarterback keeper close. Should get him. Yep. Okay, you got an all you got a, a, an excellent center and Esslinger, the best in the Big Ten. Quarterback sneak, go right behind him, a fifth year senior quarterback. Got it. Another nice drive by the Minnesota Gophers. See, so watch, Khalid. When you run a quarterback seat, you got to pause just a little bit. Allow those guys to get a surge and then find a crease and go forward. You can't go right away. You have to just pause a half a second, and Abdul Khalid did it. How about this? 13 plays thus far in this drive. Well, they've converted their third downs. That's what they didn't do early. And now in the last couple possessions, they've been converting. Play action. Abdul Khalid, left side. Tape has it at the 10 yard line, and that stops the clock with 2.19 to go. In the hand. Now there's a small mountain to the uh, to the left of this field as as we view it. And about 10 o'clock this morning, I bet there were 50, 60 young men and uh, young women who had climbed up to the top of that peak. And the public address announcer came on and said, "There are homeland security issues involved, folks. Get off the mountain right now, or you will be arrested." And they scurried down, <laughs> looked like ants on the loose. And there is an injured player now down for Oregon. It's uh, Robbie Valenzuela, number 99. Junior out of Modesto, California. You know, Oregon's a team that has had some injury problems this year early on. I mean, they lost some guys. Keith Allen was a wide receiver, a projected starter. He was injured during fall camp, and then in their opening game against Mississippi State, they lost arguably their best offensive lineman, Joey Forster, and their best defensive lineman, Haloti Nata, and uh, guys that uh, they were counting on to be big-time players for him this year. Now, there was an under, another injured player, Devin Long. Let's go down to Jill. That's right. His defensive end, Devin Long, came out of the game on the last series. He had a sprained ankle. They taped it up. He got back on the field this past series, but he just couldn't go. In fact, they've taken him into the locker room to get x-rays on that left ankle. That'd be a tough right, loss. That'd be a tough loss. Devin Long led the team in tackles behind the line of scrimmage and sacks. 
had three sacks in their last game against Oregon State. Second and three. Well, look how Minnesota has reversed things yep, in this sure quarter. Yeah. Give to the fullback to pay down to the six-yard line as the Gophers try and tie it up before the halftime break. 14-7. It's another area where Minnesota not only misses Ellerson, but they miss their tight end, Ben Utek, who's a fifth-year senior, projected to be a good NFL player, 6'6", 250 pounds. They like Matt Spaeth, the guy who's taking his place, but Utek, a fifth-year senior, not in there right now. Here's the option to the left side. Abdul Khalik keeps it to the one-yard line on first down. It'll be second and goal from the one. I think he thought he was in. For sure, he cut it up in and thought he was going to score, and then he takes a pop right at the one-yard line. See, again, nobody picks up the quarterback, and he's there. And Keith Lewis, the free safety, came from inside and tattooed him on the one-yard line. Nice tackle by Keith Lewis. Lewis, the senior from Sacramento, California. That much for the potential time touchdown. Fullback, touchdown, Minnesota. Thomas Tape gets in. No fight. 17 plays wow. in that drive. Just methodical. <laughs> Did what they wanted to do. 7.34 off the clock. And here's the extra point up and good. Tape is a physical punishing runner. His second touchdown of the day. And Minnesota ties it up at 14. Both defensive coordinators are going to have a lot to talk about in the locker room. There's the squib kick again. Picked up at the nine-yard line by Kenny Washington. Out to the 29-yard line. Thanks, Vern. It was New Year's Day in 1935, and a group of El Paso High School All-Stars took on state's second-ranked Ranger High School team. Ken Heinemann was the star of the All-Stars that day. He accounted for every single point in their 25-7 win. He then went on to start for three years at the University of Texas, El Paso, an All-American at UTEP, and a second-round pick in the NFL. Ken was honored yesterday as the 2003 Legend of the Sun Bowl. And what an honor it was to spend some time with him. Left side, and the catch made by Whitehead, Terrence Whitehead. Ken Heinemann now lives in Rogers, Arkansas, and made the trip back and got a standing ovation from that crowd of better than 1,000 yesterday. Ducks in El Paso, 3-0 and all time. In 63, when Mel Renfro was a star for Oregon, they defeated SMU in a regular season game. They came here and defeated UTEP, and then they were here in 1999. Here's Clemens, nobody open, flips it out, caught by Demetrius Williams, number six at the 41-yard line. Here in the second quarter, they have been able to protect their quarterback tremendously. And uh, when you give any quarterback a lot of time to throw, he's going he's gonna to find seams in your defense. He's 16 of 19 now, 156 yards. First down and 10. Clements tucks it and moves up near midfield at the 50-yard line. 40 seconds to go. Timeout yeah. called by the Oregon Ducks. Yeah, because right now they're still they're in, in a position where they could get in scoring position here with 40 seconds left. And the ball at the 50-yard line. Well, they may not do it on this play with second and short, but if, if Oregon converts here, I would expect Minnesota to try to come after Kellen Clemens the next play. Greg Hudson, defensive coordinator, had a little extra time there with that Oregon timeout. On second down, Clements fires it right side. Nice job. By Sammy Parker. Nice job by Parker getting out of bounds. Even though Oregon has two timeouts left, if you can save them, save them. Make the catch, get the first down, get out of bounds. Ten yard gain. And yeah, a first and ten. Now here's where I would anticipate seeing Minnesota come with some pressure because they just have not been able to harass Kellen Clemens at all, and he's throwing the ball in rhythm. Little shovel pass underneath, and Whitehead 
gets the pass and wow. he's down to the 25 yard line. The clock stops for the first down. Eli Ward, their starting free safety, was the guy who was down, and they're telling him he has to come off for a play. So the clock won't start again. Kellen Clemens is going to have a time to get everybody set up. Quentin White hurried on as the free safety. Boy, I, I don't understand why they had to do that. They used the clock play, but because they took so much time for Eli Ward to get off the field, I thought they could have easily gotten a play called and snapped it yes. and then executed the play. Let's take another look at this. You know, it took a long time for him to start the ball ready for play, and uh, Kellen Clemens didn't want to use one of the timeouts. I understand saving the timeouts, but I thought they had time to execute a play. Left side, Justin Ward. He's the quarterback, throws it back to Clemens. It's quarterback to quarterback. Maybe that's why they <laughs> Maybe so. The and they use one of their timeouts now with 8.8 .8 seconds left in the first half. Kellen Clemens got up to call timeout, but Jason Fife, the other quarterback, beat him to it a long time before. Jason Fife ran all the way across the field and called timeout. Jason Fife, the backup quarterback, throw back to the starting quarterback, and they get in nice field goal range on the little trick play. They're gonna go for a play here. They've got plenty of time to take one shot at the end zone, and with that timeout, even if something bad happens, they can stop the clock and get their field goal team on. Parker goes to the right side. Williams comes near side. Minnesota called timeout. Pretty good move by Greg Hudson. Wanted to see what personnel Oregon had in the game, what formation they lined up in. Here's Parker up here now. He's been the go-to guy. Eight catches already, including a touchdown. Here's Clements. Goes deep in the middle, incomplete. <laughs> Took a shot at it. Went for Demetrius Williams on the slant route. A little half roll by the quarterback. I don't think Terrence Campbell got a hand on the ball, but he was there in the vision of both the quarterback and the wide receiver. And now Jared Siegel will try this field goal. Uh, Jared Siegel a year ago mentioned he was uh, 20 of 24, a Luke Rosa Award finalist. This year, the number is uh, not as impressive. 10 of 16 coming into the game. This from 30 yards away. A flag is down. The kick is good. We'll see about the penalty now. There was no flag on the play. There was seven men on the line of scrimmage. The kick is good. Halftime. We welcome you back to the beginning of the third quarter, the 70th annual Wells Fargo Sun Bowl. Minnesota trailing 14 to 7. This one goes right over Barber's head. Touch back, it will come out to the 20-yard line. And a moment ago, Jill Arrington had a chance to chat with Glenn Mason of Minnesota. Coach Mason, what adjustments will you make at halftime? in order to get in the face of Kellen Clemens, who's had a lot of time to move the ball. Well, our major problem has been we get some pretty good push up the middle, and our ends have given up contain. So we're mixing it up a little bit. We're going to give them a little more free reign to get some uh, rush from the defensive end position. And, Coach, will we see your running game open up a little more in the second half? Well, you know, uh, let's face it. They haven't stopped us, and we haven't stopped them. We like what we're doing. Our, our game is a cumulative effect. We're going to keep pounding at them, and... Uh, we think some of those two and three yard gains will be four and five yard gains as the game goes on. All right, coach, thank you. Good luck. And on first down and 10, the handoff goes to Jakari Wallace, number seven, and uh, gets around the left side for a substantial gain on first down. Well, welcome back to the Sun Bowl. Impressions of the first half. Well, I think Glenn Mason was right. Neither team has stopped what the other one is doing. Oregon's passing game has the upper hand, Minnesota's running game. I think. The key in the second half, there were no turnovers in the first half. Whichever team protects the football, and if there's a big play on special teams, turnovers in special teams will decide this football game. Uh, I enjoyed seeing a different side of you at halftime. <laughs> <laughs> Not my best side. I don't, I don't gloat much. And here's Barber going around the right side. Home Depot halftime stats. First downs, rushing yards. 
Those passing yards, big edge for Oregon. And that time of possession really flip flop in the in the two quarters because Oregon had the edge in the first quarter. Minnesota took the edge in the second quarter, and uh, and that's where we stand right now, a three-point game. Third and eight. Here's the change from Abdul Khalik. Almost intercepted. Yeah, nice play. Nice play by Justin Finnessy. He read the slant. That's what they've tried to throw to Hosick. Finnessy limping off the field at the end of that play, taking himself off of the punt return team, or trying to. This was not a blitz. It was a quick throw, and Finnessy read the slant and got underneath the route. Ouch. Looks like he got his left ankle caught up underneath him on the tackle. Fourth down, and Reese Lloyd is on to punt. Stephen Moore perched at the 35-yard line, and Finnessy on the bench. High, not very long. Fair catch taken. Call for and taken by Stephen Moore at the 35-yard line. Trying to confuse or at least disrupt the rhythm of Kellen Clemens because he had a great rhythm throwing the football in that first half. And when it wasn't there, he made some plays running it himself. Hands it off on first down. Right side. This is uh, Terrence Whitehead, the sophomore from Henderson, Nevada. Comes over right the right side and picks up uh, five or six. Well, the two quarterbacks, Assad Abdul Khalik, 7 of 14, and uh, Kellen Clemens, 18 of 23. Those are Foutsian numbers. Yep, yeah, very good. And no interceptions for either guy. Dan Fouts, one of the great quarterbacks, of course, who played at Oregon, graduated back in 72, went on to some degree of fame in the NFL. Here's the handoff, Whitehead. 45. You know, Dan's a Dan's a good friend, and uh, I, I just I can see him sitting in Sisters, Oregon, watching this right now, and knowing that I'm going to unload on him <laughs> because he's of course in the Hall of Fame. Well, there you see Dan Fouts in 1970 with 16 touchdown passes, and he's been surpassed by Kellen Clemens. Here's the thing that amazed me in his career at Oregon: 37 touchdown passes, 54 interceptions. Oh, his backup was. Here's the handoff. Norv Turner. Mm. Dante Rosario with the carry, and let's see if he got the first down. It's going to be fourth down. They're not even going to measure. Kellen Clemens urging Mike Bellotti to go for it. When they played in 1999, a key play was a fourth and 11 play late in the game, and Mike Bellotti opted to go for it, and they converted. Here he's opting to try to pin Minnesota back with the punt. Probably a good decision at this point in the second half. So, uh, unless there is a fake here, neither team able to generate a first down on its first possession. Martinez, nice and high. And a fair catch called by Marion Barber. He takes it at the 19-yard line. 36-yard punt, nothing on the return. Welcome back to the Wells Fargo Sun Bowl. 70 consecutive years, the 70th anniversary. In the 60s, Oregon and SMU played in this newly expanded facility. Oregon won that game. The first national appearance, 64, the first game televised by CBS, 1968. As we mentioned, Lindsey Nelson and Frank Gifford were the broadcasters for that game. Sun has uh, made a reappearance as the Gophers have it on first down and 10. The handoff left side, it's Marion Barber. And let's uh, check in with Jill Arrington. Jill? Well, Oregon's defense is pretty banged up. Justin Finnessy is on the field right now. Their cornerback, he sprained his left ankle. They taped it up, and he's back out there. Devin Long's left ankle, they x-rayed it. The x-rays are negative. He's also on the field. But Robbie Valenzuela is out of the game. He has a left ankle sprain. You know, the other guy that's out there right now is Jerry Matson, number 52, who has a calf injury that he injured here at the Sun Bowl practicing and did not start the game. They started Justin Andrews in his place, but he is out there playing right now alongside of Kevin Mitchell, the other linebacker. On second down, the ball comes left side. See, these inside tackles for Oregon are good football players. I mean, they, they are holding their own in there, Oshansky and Siavii. Junior C of EE from American Samoa. Earlier this season, his mom and dad made that long flight 
from American Samoa, and they watched three games that the Ducks played, including the, the win over Michigan. And Junior said it was the first time because he was at junior college here. He had not seen his father in six years. Oh, my. So they had three weeks as his mom uh, about three years ago, but they had three weeks together in the middle of the season. That's great. There's the toss right side. Maroney, he's nifty. Still going. Chased by Lewis, caught by Lewis, but a first down, Minnesota. I tell you, I am so impressed with the vision of this young running back. I mean, he's a true freshman, although, you know, he's played a whole season, so he's really not a true freshman anymore. But watch his vision as he takes the outside toss, having trouble running inside, outside. Now watch, he's already looking for the next defenders. He makes Keith Lewis miss, cuts it all the way back across, but it's his eyesight, his vision downfield, knowing where the next tackler's coming from, allows him to make it a big play. Well, among those, he uh, whipped Devin Long, who may not have been able to catch up because of the ankle problem. Now, first down. Here's Abdul Khalik being chased by Devin Long again. And the pass is caught at the 13-yard line. And Devin Long is hurt. I mean, he he had a shot, and he's limping after the play, and he's obviously not playing at 100%. May not have even gotten to Abdul Khalik if he was 100%, because he's pretty agile, but Devin Long, with that ankle wrapped up pretty good, is... Uh, playing on guts more than on uh, full strength right now. Now the sophomore from Anacortes leads this team with 10 and a half sacks, but uh, hampered by the ankle. First down and 10 after Patterson made the catch of 16 yards. Give it to the fullback, Thomas Tepay, number 44. Let's go back to the play prior to this one, Todd. Well, Abdul Khalid, you see Devin Long trying to stop and make the play, and he just, you know, he's playing on one leg, basically, because you got one good ankle and one bad ankle. You just can't, you can't stop and move and change directions the way you'd like to. But he's a warrior, and he's a guy that they're counting on to be out there on the field, his presence, and so he's going to play the best he can. We are back in El Paso, the 70th Sun Bowl. And Oregon leading 17 to 14. Minnesota with a 45-yard run by Maroney, the longest by far of the day. Rushing yards thus far, five in the first quarter, 142 cents. And uh, this, of course, a, a team that averaged 293 yards on the ground per game. Second and five at the eight. Keep it on the ground, Marion Barber. Barber on the kick. Sophomore from Plymouth, Minnesota, with a couple of yards. Back is uh, wide to the right side. On third down, they get it up the middle to pay. Wow, what a run. To the one yard line and in. Touchdown. What a run. Born, as we mentioned, in Liberia, now lives in St. Paul. This powerful running by Taipei. You know, they fake the reverse, and that loosens things up a little bit. I think he got away with one there. I think I his do knee too. was down before yep. the ball got in yep. the end zone. But Greg Esslinger, the center, with another outstanding block. Third touchdown today for Tape. Reese Lloyd with the extra point. <laughs> Up and good. From the airport and anywhere within a five. 21 17, Minnesota. 8 28 to go. Third quarter. Big rush in that uh, touchdown drive, the 45 yards picked up by Maroney, and then Tepay caps it off with uh, the touchdown. Reese Lloyd with the kickoff at the goal line. Kenny Washington. Let's go back and take a look at the touch. I've talked about the center, Greg Esslinger. Now, I want you to watch him, how athletic he is as he moves around here and gets the block on Jerry Matson. Watch the center snap the ball and then the good feet to get inside and then pin that linebacker to the inside and allow to pay to get into the end zone. I mean, he is an outstanding young football player, a sophomore out of Bismarck, North Dakota. And uh, again, the best voted by both the media and the coaches as the top center in the Big Ten. Glenn Mason telling us he's uh, one of the best he's ever been around. 
Glenn would know. Longtime offensive line coach, Ohio State, among other places. On first down, just threw that ball a little bit behind his big tight end. Good idea to try to get him into the game because, uh, you know, he has not really been a factor. You see number 85 working on the post route. Nice stick move, and he was open, but Clemens just too far behind him for the big guy to make the catch. Now, Jason Fife, the backup quarterback, is back on the field as a wide receiver. He's the top of the screen, wide left. Clemens deep right side for Sammy Parker. He had separation. And the pass is overthrown. You don't want to put your defense right back on the field. You know, that was a kind of a punishing drive that Minnesota just ran against you. And now third down at the chances of going three and out. Not good for Oregon. Third and ten. Three-man rush for the Gophers. Clemens goes left side, and he's got his tight end, but that's short of the first down yep. at the 29-yard line. Good defense. And, and it was only a three-man rush, but Daryl Reed, number 51, got enough pressure to force Kelly Clemens to, to go to an alternate receiver. Watch Daryl Reed, number 51, just pushes the center, and he's going to be just in there enough to make Clemens get rid of the football before he wanted to. Paul Martinez. And Marion Barber calls for the fair catch, takes it at the 43-yard line. <laughs> Counting sheep will never be out of work again. Welcome to heaven. You'll feel the difference the moment you lie down. Serta, we make the world's best mattress. How old were you when you started to walk? How long did you walk before you started to run? Do you remember your first dance? At Wells Fargo, we want to know what it feels like to be in your shoes, to know what stage you're in, so we can help you succeed in your next. That's why our people get to know you, so we can help you wherever you're headed, just as we have for 150 years. Wells Fargo, the next stage. Wow, you ordered pizza. You sure know the way to a man's heart. I think all relationships are based on honesty. Me too. Look, before this goes any further, there is something you should know. You're married? No, it's the pizza. It's not delivery. It's DiGiorno. For fresh baked pizza at home, it's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. I knew you were hiding something. I can read you like a book. And now try DiGiorno Deep Dish. Deep in toppings, deep in cheese. When a doctor who made women beautiful is murdered, the truth isn't pretty. You've never made a mistake with time? Not one I was forced to bury. The first new CSI Miami of the year, Monday. Friday on CBS, it's the Michael Jackson special. Catch all his number one greatest hits and join celebrity guests Beyonce, Quincy Jones, and many more. Plus, a new song by Michael. Don't miss Michael Jackson number ones Friday at 8, 7 Central on CBS. 21 17. Here's Barber on the loose, and now they're starting to pound him. Well, there is a flag. I think this one's going to come back for a holding inside. On the offense, 10 yard penalty from the spot of the foul. Repeat first down. It's a real break for Oregon because their defense was. Didn't get much rest. It was a three and out by their offense. Good collision. Nice defensive job. Quinn Dorsey. Quinn Dorsey. He stayed at home, you know, because that was a uh, that was a play where Tape was trying to cut it back. It was an inside zone play, and he was going to try to cut it back. And where those cutbacks are effective is if guys chase the play or if they get out of their position. And Quinn Dorsey stayed right at home in his position, was ready for the cutback. Dorsey from Denver, Colorado. Second and 17 after the one game. Had to sit out first five games of this year, did Dorsey, because of an NCAA suspension. And here's Abdul Khalik, deep right side. Just about. Jakari Wallace, number seven, was deep. And uh, Abdul Khalik hit the deck after he let go. Shansky with good pressure on the inside. Well, he's a physical specimen now. I'll tell you, 6'6", 
310 pounds. Chiseled out of granite. And in my continuing quest to, to bring together the worlds of football and figure skating, he was born in Dnepropetrovsk, which is also the hometown of Oksana Bayul, who won the 1994 gold medal. Stick with me. I, that's amazing. I, I'm not even going to try to say that. <laughs> that's beautiful. Here's the toss, left side. Olshansky did tell me yesterday that he is he is not met Oksana Bayou, no. so that was a that was a reach. Came here when he was seven years of age. His mom and dad immigrated from Dnepropetrovsk and went to San Francisco. And you can just see him, you know, the more he plays this game, I mean, he's got great upside. I mean, when you talk about playing at the next level, I mean, he's just a junior, but he's he only played two years of high school football. He's still kind of learning the game, learning technique, learning how to play with leverage. He's going to be a good one. Nice high punt. And a fair catch called for and taken by Stephen Moore at the 20-yard line. Well, in the 80s, Maryland defeated Tennessee. The John Henry. Cock people came aboard in 1986. Thurman Thomas led Oklahoma State in 87. And Pat Hayden and I had the honor of broadcasting that Army Alabama game, 29 28 in 1988. Derek Thomas played in that game for Alabama, the late Derek Thomas. And I'll never, that was the first time I'd ever been exposed to the Army Corps. Uh -huh. What a wonderful group of kids. I still remember Mike Mayweather from that year. Here's the pass to Parker out on the left side. Well, that's 10 catches now for Sammy Parker. He has obviously been a guy that Minnesota, I, I don't think Minnesota can cover these receivers. And it's just a matter of the other options are to get pressure or to hope that Kellen Clemens misfires a little bit. But I don't think they are able to cover these guys. If the wide receiver screen, the other receiver has to get a block, Demetrius Williams with the key block out there, and that turns into good game. 10 yards and a first down. Parker, 10 for 95 and a touchdown. That is a career high. There's Clemens, left side. Matt Floberg, number 32, the fullback with the catch. Justin Fraley on the tackle. Second down and five. Clemens quarterback draw comes right side. Stiff arm. Wow. Good defense. Yes, it was. You know, it was first it was Terrence Shaw. He was the first guy. His nickname is Stick. Because he's kind of lean. He's tall and lean. And he strung it out and strung it out, and then Isom came and finished it off. It looked like Clemens might get the first down at first, but Terrence Campbell is the first guy. He's the guy to get stiff arm, but he forced him to go wide. And the wider he went, the more white shirts were able to get there to make the play. Good play by Terrence Campbell. And that brings up a third and four. From Andy Ludwig, the new offensive coordinator. Williams out of the backfield on a nice job defensively by Justin Isom, number 20, on Demetrius Williams. Kellen Clemens has had a pretty good day. I mean, he's been able to stand back there and find things. When he doesn't see what he likes, he's been able to make some plays running the football. Has not turned it over. 22 of 29 for 205 yards and a pair of touchdowns so far in this football game. And again, I get back to the point, turnovers. Neither team with a turnover, I still think that's going to be a critical aspect of who wins this game. They did get a first down on the last play, and here is Clements. They're going to rule him. Yeah, that'll no, be... Uh, call intentional grounding. Intentional I thought ground. they might have called him down as a sack. Again, it was Daryl Reed in there, number 51. The first time in a long time that Minnesota has gotten quick pressure on Kellen Clemens. He was not outside of the tackle box when he tried to throw that away. Watch Daryl Reed with the quick pressure inside, beat the right guard, and right there on top of the quarterback. That's the best offensive lineman that Oregon has, too, Adam Snyder. First team all Pac-10. Daryl Reed went around him quick. So the penalty makes it a second down and 18. See that jersey on Gerald Reed? See how it's stuck to his shoulder pads? Right. 
they put two-way tape on their shoulder pads, defensive linemen do. And they tape those jerseys down so, so there's no loose parts on the jersey so that offensive linemen can't grab them and hold them. Dirty trick. <laughs> Wear those jerseys real tight, extra small, and tape them down. Second down. After the penalty, second and 18, here's Clements back. Left side, tight end, Tim Day. Number 85 out to the 44-yard uh, line. We were talking today. Kellen Clemens, and let's uh, check in with Jill Arrington. Well, Todd, you know a thing or two about quarterback fraternity, and Kellen Clemens told me that he's been molded by many quarterbacks from Oregon's history. He's talked to Cody Pickett, Joey Harrington, Taylor Barton, Matt Kegel. They've all called him and made an effort to talk to him and give him advice. They've made impressions on him that he says will stay with him for the rest of his life. It looks like he's using that advice well today. He's playing real well. And, uh, you know, Oregon, that's one of those things that unless you follow Pac-10 football or Oregon football, you're not aware of tremendous quarterback tradition at the University of Oregon. Started with a guy named Van Brocklin yeah. a few years back, and there's Parker with his 11th catch, and that one's a gain of 16. See, if they can't pressure Kelly Clemens, they won't stop Oregon's passing game because they aren't able to cover Sammy Parker and Tim Day and Demetrius Williams. They don't have confidence playing man-to-man -man and blitzing them, so it's up to those front guys, guys like Daryl Reed and Anthony Montgomery to, to create pressure. 16 on the last one. This is the eighth play of the drive. As Oregon tries to reclaim the lead, they led at the half 17 14. Clemens back. Deep man open. Parker all by himself. Touchdown, Ducks. 12 catches for Sammy Parker. That one for 40 yards, his second TD today. Well, that one was more like it for Sammy Parker because coming into the game, 17 career touchdowns, they averaged 37 yards per touchdown play. The first one he caught today was a short one. That's right, more along the average, 40 yards. Kelly Clemens almost missed that one. It was a little bit of an underthrow, and Justin Fraley almost got back and able to make the play. Good protection, steps up in the pocket, and watch, it's a little bit underthrown, and he has to stop and wait for it, and Fraley just a hair late to get a hand on it. Fife the hold, and Jared Siegel with the extra point. And the Oregon Ducks have reclaimed the lead. 40-yard catch, Parker, 24-21. Yeah, folks, this is Captain Williams. Uh, normally, be looking at the I-35 corridor on the left side of the aircraft right about now, but we just got word that a blackout knocked out all the power in the area. Uh, hey, Dad. We'll try and keep you updated on the situation. Is that know. light down there? Thank you. I'm not sure. Why have backups for the backups? Because your money deserves every advantage. Time now for the Fidelity Investment Scoring Recap. Take you back to the beginning of the game. And uh, Rosario with the first touchdown for Oregon. Then Parker tied it up. And here's Sammy Parker with the first of his two touchdowns this afternoon. At the half after the phase touchdown. 14-14. And we went to the break with Oregon up by a three. Minnesota reclaimed the lead on Tepe's touchdown. And then just a moment ago, Sammy Parker with his 12th catch today, second for a TD, 40 yards out. He's got world-class speed, but he strolled in for the score. And that's where we are, 24-21. And the Ducks will kick off. Siegel to do the chore for Oregon. This one taken at the 20-yard line. Matt Spate, the backup tight end. And he's out to the 38-yard line. 
go back and take a look at the touchdown. Now, here is Sammy Parker, and here is Demetrius Williams. And what they're going to do, they're going to help each other. Williams is going to run off here and then break out, and Parker's going to run right behind him and break in, and the post is what's going to open up. But they started with that formation close together. They're down the field together, and at the last minute, they split. And when they split, Parker was open just enough for Clemens to get him the football. Well-designed play and call. Offensive coordinator Andy Ludwig, his second year as a coordinator for Mike Bellotti. On first down, here's the toss left. Lawrence Peroni, the freshman number from St. Louis, who's 20. had a big game today. Quinn Dorsey makes the tackle number 30 for Oregon. Yeah, I like him. I mean, I, you know, Marion Barber, I think, is an excellent back, too. He's had a great year, but I sure like uh, I sure like Lawrence Barone. He's got a little more burst, I think, to him. Well, the Sun Bowl record tied, as you see, 12 for 151, and Oregon, of course, with a quarter and two minutes to go. Left side, Maroney again. Boy, nice play. This, this is a nice play. They haven't shown this. Minnesota's got two coordinators, co-offensive coordinators. Tony Peterson, who's the quarterback coach. Mitch Browning, who's the tackle and tight ends coach. Watch everything go this way, and then they come back out the, the backside, and it had the whole Oregon defense kind of sucked to the inside, and Maroney got to the corner. They hadn't shown that action, a counter action back to the backside. Nine carries now for 99 yards for Lawrence Maroney. Here's a play fake. Good job by Abdul Khalid going into double coverage, and that one is incomplete. It had an equal chance of being picked off by the Ducks. And let's go down to Jill Arrington, Jill. Well, if you guys can see on the sidelines here, the whole team is surrounded about around Lawrence Maroney. The trainers added a pad to his left shoulder earlier. They put him back in the game. He's the leading rusher by 50 yards today. He just made two great plays. Something's going on. I can't get any more official information, but I do know they added that pad to his shoulder. They're doing something with him right now, as you can see on the sideline. All right. Thank you, Jill. 24-21, second down and 10. Hosack comes uh, to the near side. And a timeout called as the Gophers have to burn the second of their three. And Abdul Khalid comes over to chat with Glenn Mason. We've got 2.15 to go, third quarter. And he makes the catch up. Yes! <laughs> Share all your favorite moments with Verizon Wireless. I think mom really likes the color. Give your family the gift of unlimited family calling anytime minutes. That's right, anytime minutes on the America's Choice Family Share Plan. So switch to Verizon Wireless, the company that gives you the nation's most reliable wireless network with fewer dropped calls. Plus, hurry and buy one LG phone for $19.99 and get up to three free. Verizon Wireless, we never stop working for you. You can hear me now. Good. Wow, you ordered pizza. You sure know the way to a man's heart. I think all relationships are based on honesty. Me too. Look, before this goes any further, there is something you should know. You're married? No, it's the pizza. It's not delivery. It's DiGiorno. For fresh baked pizza at home, it's not delivery, it's DiGiorno. I knew you were hiding something. I can read you like a book. And now try DiGiorno deep dish. Deep in toppings, deep in cheese. A bride disappears from her wedding. Something in this family isn't right. But that's only the beginning. You're thinking she was up to no good. Without a trace, CBS Thursday. 2.15 to go, third quarter. Oregon 24-21. A big effort so far, though, by Lawrence Bernoni. He's now moved into second place among freshman rushers this season and uh, has a chance to surpass Jerry Seymour. Bernoni's in the middle of that pack somewhere. I'm not sure what they're doing. <laughs> I don't know. Unless they don't want anybody to see what they're fixing or changing or adjusting. That could be. On second down. Oh, boy. Junior C-R-P-E. Yeah. Ouch. Just quick penetration. I mean, he's powerful and he's quick and he's right in the face of Marion Barber before he can get going. You know, I remember earlier in the football season, there was a really good piece done on, on one of the networks about 
football players and the passion they have in America Samoa and uh, Samoan football players and I thought it was I mean it was a great piece I mean they uh, they love the game of football here's Abdul Khalid being flushed out he's got a chance to get some yardage on the ground and uh, he goes down just inside the 35 yard line very close to the first down well Eugene Oregon to American Samoa pretty good trip and they do love their football there Steve Greatwood is the is the uh, defensive line coach for this team and American Samoa is his recruiting area <laughs> you, you can get there out of San Francisco like every other week or I guess twice a week is what I meant to say and another big play by Junior Siavii. He got the first down, though. Tope is a physical, tough runner and uh, ran it up inside there on fourth and short. But I'll tell you, when, uh, when Junior gets there to the ball carrier, he brings it. Oshansky uh, coming out of the game right now. And another uh, young man from American Samoa, Matt Tuina, has just come on the field, number 45 for Oregon. First down and 10. Final 35 seconds of the third quarter. Fake the reverse. Abdul Kalik goes deep. There's a flag down. The catch is made. Now it's knocked away, ruled incomplete. There are two flags down in the vicinity of the 10-yard line. A little bit of a trick play, bringing the back out of the backfield. You've been running the ball with success. You go play action and slip to pay out on a wheel route. And he, uh, interesting to see what the call is going to be. Certainly worthy of a long conversation. Here's Steve Shaw, defensive holding, yep. Well, defensive holding is a little bit better than a touchdown. You know, that's five yards, and it'll give him an automatic first down. Holding on the defense, 10-yard penalty from the previous spot, first and 10. 10 yards, I should say. Uh, Fennessey disagrees with it. And uh, Lawrence Maroney and Marion Barber back on the field. Jill, Jill Arrington and uh, her producer Debbie Bullock uh, telling us just a moment ago that the players on the uh, Minnesota bench were trying to hide the fact that they were working on Maroney's left shoulder. So that's the reason they had the, the towels up. And he is back in there now with Barber. There he comes. There's there the reverse. reverse. There he goes. Touchdown. Minnesota offense is fun to watch, boy. All three of the backs are in on this one. They fake to Barber, they give to Maroney, and Tape is the guy who gets the key block on the outside that springs him. They've got depth at running back, they've got talent at running back, and now they've got the lead back in the game. 22 yard run by number 22. His 10th touchdown on the ground this season, and Reese Lloyd on for the extra point. Whatever they put on him in that big pile or huddle must have worked. <laughs> Lawrence Maroney. Gopher can hardly breathe. Now, this was the scene uh, about three or four plays ago. Maroney on the sideline, and they got the sewing needle out. Yeah, they sewed him back together and fixed his uniform. Now, watch these blocks. One, 
the left guard and the fullback. Watch all three of these guys get blocks on the reverse to Maroney. Normally that's a wide receiver. Ellerson is the guy that normally runs this play, but Maroney's in, but all three guys, excellent execution. They fooled the Oregon defense, and Maroney, with his sewed up uniform, takes it to the end zone. He has been impressive. 214 yards rushing now for Minnesota, so they're getting it back in gear. 293, their average coming in. Maroney, 121 of that. And the kickoff. He's going to bring it out. Kenny Washington, he was five yards deep. Not sure all that yeah, was worth it. I don't know either. Reese Lloyd. Well, the ground game now uh, being emphasized with excellence. Total rushing, 214. And they had five at the end of the first quarter. Yeah, they're getting it. They're getting it going now. One more chance. You know, it's interesting. You talk about balance offense. Oregon and the University of Miami, Florida, the only two teams in college football over the last five years that have gained at least 2,000 yards rushing and passing. The only two teams in all of college football. Great balance. Kellen Clemens back to throw. Centers for his short receiver. That's Sammy Parker, who has now set a Sun Bowl record with his 13th catch in this ball game. And that is the final play of the third quarter. We've reached the end of three with Minnesota leading by four. We'll return to the Sun Bowl Stadium after this message and this word from your local station. Seventieth Sun Bowl from El Paso, Texas. We begin the final quarter. Vern Lundquist, Todd Blackledge, and Jill Arrington, and our crack crew here to help celebrate the final day of the year 2003. Second down and one. Oregon. After the catch, here's a play fake. Clemens flips it out. Sammy Parker with his 14th catch, and he is uh, down with a first down. 14.51 to go in the final quarter of play. <laughs> I'll tell you, you know, the bowls this year, other than Nebraska's 17-3 win the other night in the Alamo Bowl and Fresno State beat UCLA 17-9, all the other bowl games have been offense dominated, mm -hmm. and we've got the same kind of game. Neither defense can stop what the other team is doing. Minnesota running it, Oregon passing it. Whoever scores last and whoever doesn't turn the ball over is going to win this game. Four-point margin currently, and here is the handoff to Terrence Whitehead out to the 32-yard uh, line. Now Sammy Parker, the track star football player, number one, with a Sun Bowl record number of catches today, 14 for 162, wow. and a couple of touchdowns. Young man from the Los Angeles area, his stepfather shot and killed back in September, a family tragedy that uh, Sammy Parker and his mom had to deal with. Second down and five. Here's Clements back. Off the back foot, caught. See, they just can't cover these guys. I mean, they, you know, part of it is they're down a little bit because their starting corner is not out there. Trumaine Banks got sent home for disciplinary reasons. And, uh, but part of it is also they can't get pressure on Kellen Clemens. And so the, I'm impressed with what both offensive lines have done. Oregon has done a great job of protecting their quarterback, opening up a little bit of running lanes, and the Minnesota offensive line doing their thing. Clemens now 300 yards, 28 of 35. Yeah. Has, has thrown very few bad passes. I mean, just hasn't misfired hardly at all. And will go upstairs again, maybe. Still, 
able to escape the tackle and goes out of bounds at the 40-yard line. And then that's frustrating now for Greg Hudson, the Minnesota defensive coordinator. I mean, they finally do get pressure, and Clemens is athletic enough to get away from it and make a play. I mean, they get two guys in there before he even gets set on his last step, and he still turns it into a positive play. Well, it has not been a great season for fourth quarter at uh, Eugene. Outscored 122 to 41. And they trail by four, looking at a second down and three. Left side. Nice play. 30 yard line. Very nice play. Kenny Washington, number 20, gets the first down for the Oregon. Boy, you're, they can't stop each other. No, they can't. I mean, neither team has an answer right now for what the other guys are doing on offense. And so, I mean, it's going to come down to if a team drops the ball or throws an interception or a ball gets knocked down or something, is going to turn the tide because neither defense is proving right now that they're able to come up with the play to stop the other guy. That's an Oregon first down at the Minnesota 30-yard line. Average gain on first down, eight yards for the Ducks in this ball game. Clemens rolling out and looking back to his left. There's Parker, not there, and he was open. Yep. He had him singled up back there. Design play where you roll to the right and have a one receiver on the back side and isolate him. And he had Parker isolated on ice him on the corner route. And he was open, but Kelly Clemens just a little far outside with the football. Second down and 10. Oregon Band has uh, gone to the new uniforms here in the second half. Got their duck waiters on. Yeah. Sure, marketing has something to do with this. Second and ten. Clements fires caught tight end to the 15-yard line. That's Tim Day, the sophomore from Las Vegas. A gain of 15. So again, protection. Great job up front by the Oregon guys. Clemens able to stand right in there. Watch Clemens come off his number one target and doesn't have to go anywhere. Just readjust his feet, readjust his eyes, and hits his tight end for the first down. Good solid pocket provided by that big front up, up, up in front of him. A uh, first down uh, as the ball is marked at the 14-yard line and the ninth play of the drive coming up. Blitz. Clemens, they got it this time. It. Yep. At the 21 yard line. Well timed blitz by Minnesota. It came with pressure from the outside, and that forced Clemens to step up. And then the second guy there was able to wrap him up, Montgomery, with the sack. Anthony Montgomery, the sophomore from Cleveland, Ohio. The blitz is going to come from the top. Number 52, nobody there to pick him up. They had a guy, Whitehead, was supposed to pick him up, but he was late getting into his block and didn't make the play. Mike Bellotti knows, you know, that shouldn't have happened because we had a guy responsible to pick him up. Loss of seven. That was the second sack today. And the line of scrimmage, the 21-yard line. Here's Clemens back, right side, out of the backfield. It's Dante Rosario who has a touchdown catch in this ball game. And... Uh, He's knocked out of bounds just short of the 11-yard line. Well, there's Sammy Parker. you got to believe he's going to be a part of whatever they've got planned. <laughs> I think so. And I think Tim Day the, is the tight end, is the other guy that I would be aware of here in this part of the field. He's made a couple big catches in the middle. Sammy Parker outside is going to be matched up against Yuki Dozier up at the top of the screen. Tim Day on the left side. Third and seven. Here's Clemens, quarterback draw. And he is knocked down at the 14-yard line by Mark Lawsley, number 97. Yeah, he read the draw. His eyes were on the quarterback. 
Oregon was counting on Minnesota to just rush up the field and play pass all the way. But watch Lowsley, number 97. He's watching the quarterback, so he turns it right down inside on the draw as soon as he read it. Well played by Mark Lawsley. That's going to bring on Jared Siegel to attempt the field goal. This should be from 32 yards away. Perfect. But the Ducks do have to settle for three. 9.37 to go in the ball game. They've cut the margin to one. Back in El Paso, the Wells Fargo Sun Bowl, 70th edition. In the 90s, Michigan State became the first Big Ten team to appear and defeated USC in a Rose Bowl rematch. Priest Holmes scored four touchdowns to lead Texas past North Carolina in 1994. In 2001, Kyle Orton set Sun Bowl records for attempts, completions, and yards. And Dan Fouts was here to watch Grant Taft coach his final game as Baylor defeated Arizona back in 1992. Out of bounds. Not good. Nope. First down and 10. That kick is bad. I'm telling you now, you're having trouble stopping this running game. You get the ball on the 35-yard line. Out around the 40-yard line now, they can afford to mix it up pretty easily. Second down and six. And they try the middle nice with Thomas Tepe, number 44. It'll be third down. And Patterson, the wideouts go wide to the left side. Oregon looks like they might be sending a blitz. They are not. And here's, uh, oh, he's got a man wide open. Hosack at the 26-yard line. Marley Tucker, the strong safety, and Justin Finnessy, the corner. Finnessy came up. I'm not sure why he came up. But he bit on something and allowed the man to run right by him to the outside. First and 10. Peroni is the motion man. They fake to him. Abdul Khalid nailed. And very Fumble. close to fumbling. But I think he got it back. We've had no turnovers in the ball game. No, nope, we got one now. Now we do. And there's Igor Olshansky. Oregon came with a blitz. It was a long developing play because they faked twice. Faked the reverse and it's going to be a rollout. And under pressure, Devin Long is the guy that knocked it out, and Olshansky is the guy who came up with the football. Devin Long playing on one bad ankle, knocks the ball out. Now let's take another look at that fumble, Todd. Well, as you can see right here, the ball is coming out of, of Abdul Khalik's hands right now. It's out, and his knee is still off the ground. So it was a good call. There was some question of whether or not his knee was down before the ball came out, but that angle shows a very good call by the SEC officials. Ball was out before the knee came down in the first turnover of the game, and Oregon in business here. Olshansky with the recovery, and it's a first down 10 for the Ducks with 7.37 to go. Kellen Clemens back to throw on first down. Deep right side, there's Parker wide open. How in the world can he become that open? Well, part of it again is the, the time that Kellen Clements has. This is a long developing play, a deep crossing route. And so you've got the other receivers running defenders off in the zone defense, and then he's just gonna work his way over to a soft spot in the zone. But it's a long developing play. He started on the left side of the formation, caught it on the right sideline. Good protection for Kellen Clements set that up. 15 catches for Sammy Parker. That one good for 25 yards and a first down at the 42 yard line. On the ground, right side, Terrence Whitehead. And he's uh, good for a gain of seven. One point margin, under seven to go, second down and three. Second and three. One of the things now that Oregon wants to do, obviously take the lead, you'd love a touchdown rather than a field goal, but the other thing is you want to work that clock. I mean, you want to work as much time off the clock as you can. And the other thing to remember, Minnesota had to use two of their timeouts early in the second half. So they only have one timeout left. 
and they're going to have to work against the clock. So Oregon wants to work that clock as much as they can. This is Day in the backfield as the lead blocker of the fullback, and nothing doing on second down. That's going to bring up third and three from the 35. Four-man Minnesota rush. Clemens across the middle. Caught again and again. Sammy Parker. 16 catches. You know, even if you know they're going to throw it to him, he's still a hard guy to cover because of his speed. I mean, unless you can knock him down when he comes off the line of scrimmage, he's a hard guy to cover. He gets off the line clean. There's two guys there. The ball's not even that well thrown by Clemens, a little bit behind him, but Parker is kind of in that zone right now. He's going to catch anything that gets close to him. Well, that's our CBS Sportsline stat of the day, 16 for 200 and a first down. Here's Clemens with a fake, goes deep for Jason Fife, and it should have been picked off. Oh, my goodness. Eli Ward, both hands on it. Well, there was a couple mistakes on this play. First of all, Kellen Clemens pulled the string on it because he thought he had an easy touchdown. Breaks up the pass. As you see Demetrius Williams hobbling off. Second down. It was a perfect play call. You fake the screen, which you've thrown several times. Now you got a guy running wide open, and Kelly Clemens didn't set his feet and make a long throw. It was underthrown and almost picked off by Eli Ward. Boy, they had the touchdown to fight if he just sets his feet and throws it to the end zone. And they also lost Demetrius Williams on the play. He limps over to the bench. Yeah. You see that up. injured on the uh, collision with Jason Fife. Boy, that, you know, that's one of those plays that you set up. You can only call it once. You've run the wide receiver yep. screen. They had it. They didn't convert. Clemens for the play fake. Right side, knocked down. Mark Lusley. Now Sammy Parker. What a day he's had. Uh, it's been terrific. Two touchdown catches. How many catches now? 15? 16. 16. <laughs> My goodness. And time to celebrate earlier. It's now third and ten, though, with 5.04 to go. 16 for 200 yards. You know, and as good as his day has been, the catch he needs to make maybe on this play might be the most important play of the game. You know, I mean, they, they need to make a play here on third down. No blitz. Three-man rush, as a matter of fact. And they got him. And they got him out of field goal range, too. That's the important thing of that sack. Paul Nixon. protection throughout the night but this time the pocket collapses a little bit Paul Nixon in there some fresh legs a move Sammy Parker had his man turned around on the corner route but Clemens with not enough time and now Siegel with the long field goal attempt well it's within his range it's 47 yards he has a career long of 59 and this is for the lead plenty of distance and he hammered it home you bet. You know, he was only three of eight from 40 or above coming into that one. And he nailed that one. Jared Siegel. 47 yards. Ducks lead. Jared Siegel. Minnesota. 4.16 to go. Let's take a look at the play of the game presented by Wrangler Five Star Premium Dinner, Denim. And with the call, Jerry Allen of the Oregon Radio Network. Demetrius and Sammy and Clemens will go back and play fake and throw the ball again. Steps up, a lot of time deep. Watch Sammy wide open. He's got it, and he walks into the end zone. I mean, he walked into the end zone. Jerry Allen with the call. That gave Oregon a 24-21 lead. 
And on first down, Minnesota goes to the left. That was Marion Barber with the carry. This has been a, an offensive explosion. 813 yards of total offense in the game. Oregon with 453 yards. Minnesota now with 365. And it's been uh, who has the ball last? One of those deals. Right side out to the 26 yard line. That's Marion Barber again. His dad, of course, Marion Barber Jr., played at Minnesota and then in the NFL with the with the New York Jets. Distinguished career. Marion Barber III grew up in Plymouth, Minnesota. Third and four. Huge play right dad. here. Go for running back, 77 to 80. Abdul Khalik will hand it off and they've got the first down. Good vision by Barber. We talked about Maroney's vision. When you run that inside zone play, the cutback is always a possibility. The play starts to the left. It's starting this way, but watch him see the cutback. The tight end comes in, Spath, and makes a nice block, and that enables Barber to cut that thing back to the other way and pick up the first down. Good execution and good vision by Marion Barber. Clock is under three minutes now, and Minnesota has used two of its timeouts. There's the comparison between father and son. Here's the toss. And Maroney is out of bounds on first down. Well, they're undefeated when Maroney's been over 100 so far. Here's Abdul Khalid. He takes off. Nice move. Oh, boy. Out of bounds at the 41. Quick setup, it's not there, and then the quick decision to run the football. That's the thing that he's done all season is make good decisions in the running game, in the passing game, and an outstanding season. Inside, they've given it to the fullback, Thomas Tepe, in the Sugar Bowl, LSU, and Oklahoma. Abdul Kalik. Patterson makes the catch and they move across the 50. Because there's no panic in his body language right now. I mean, he's hanging in there. He knows that a field goal can win it. Just keep managing the offense, running the, running the offense. Second and one, down. and they got another first down. As Tape picks it up, that'll stop the clock while they move the chain. 150 to go in the ball game. So we talked about Oregon wanting to use up the clock. Now Minnesota thinking the same thing. You know, we haven't stopped Kelly Clemens much in their passing game, so let's not let them have much time after we score. Option play. Abdul Kalik nailed. Well, Jerry Maxson, number 52. Playing on a bad leg. <laughs> playing because he wants to be out there with his guys. The junior from Edmonds, Washington, makes a huge play and forces Minnesota to burn their last time out. It's an option, and Matson from his middle linebacker, reads it quickly and slides in there and makes the play. Well done by Jerry Matson. Minnesota has used its final timeout. 16, Reese Lloyd, hoping he gets a chance for the game winner for the Golden Gophers. His career long is 54. Young man who came over with his family from England when he was a youngster. Now second down and 12. And Assad Abdul Khalik looks to throw it. Fires it out for Patterson. He gets a good block. And Patterson is out of bounds to stop the clock at the 39-yard line. And that is going to the tackle by Keith Lewis. Leave them short of the first down. That's another fifth-year senior, Tony Patterson, who does an excellent job of getting as much yardage as he can on this and then getting out of bounds. Don't get tackled in bounds. Fight your way to the sideline and stop that clock. Kalik, Devin Long is cut, can't get there. Kalik drives. I don't think he got the first. He's short, and the clock is running. And they're going to go for it here to try to get closer. I don't think they feel like they can kick it from here. They're going to try to run a play to get a first down. Fourth and a long one. It would have been a 53-yarder had they attempted it. Now the clock at 59 seconds. Handoff. Got it. Maroney. First down. And the clock stops. Yep. 
Another good job of getting it out of bounds. And again, you can't say enough about the patience and the vision of this young tail. He's patient to set up the blocks. He's got to get one, a little jab step there to get outside, and then following his block to the sideline. Keith Lewis not able to bring him down in the field of play. If they don't get a yard, it would be a 50-yard attempt. They are out of timeouts. Maroney, 13 carries in the ball game. First and 10. Play clock is down to eight right now, too. He comes near side and has Hosack out of bounds at the 26-yard line. We're back to play, second down. And what a big play by Devin Long. Yep, he's down right there, and the clock is rolling. So uh, Asad abdul Khalik's going to have to spike the ball. He's got to get him up to the line and spike the ball because they can't stop the clock. Oregon calls time. Oh, my goodness. Why? Oregon stopped the oh clock. Oh, goodness gracious. Why would you do that? Mike Bellotti immediately said, call timeout. And they did. I don't get it. Wow. Third and seven. I, I'm not sure either. All I know is when the when the play was stopped in the backfield, the clock was still running, and they were kind of out of field goal range at that point. They were going to have to spike the ball to stop the clock because they have no timeouts. And Mike Bellotti may have helped Minnesota there by using one of his timeouts. seconds to the clock 38.5 seconds now Great fans here at the, West the only thing that he might have been thinking is hey they're gonna probably kick a field goal they might make it I want to try to save some time for my offense I don't know I don't either there's Bellotti signaling call time and you see the clock time finally called with 38 seconds and what to go. he didn't want is he didn't want Minnesota to be able to kick a field goal and have no time left on the clock so he's thinking hey let's try to save a little bit of time in the event that we can get the ball back but with the play behind the line of scrimmage they had they would have had Minnesota scrambling there a little bit to get something done as it is it's a huge third down play now for the Oregon defense Jakari Wallace goes wide to the left Hosack and Patterson are wide right third down and the change by Abdul Khalik they keep it on the ground it's fourth down and they're running the field goal unit out 30 seconds and counting and Mike Bellotti calls another timeout Again, he's thinking about his offense right now. He's not thinking about harassing the kicker. He's thinking about his offense. Now, a lot of times you think, well, they call a timeout to freeze the opponent's kicker. That's not, I don't think, what he's doing. I think he's trying to save a little bit of time for his offense to get in position to kick possibly another game-winning field goal. Now, let's watch the uh, Maroney run on the third down. Check at the line of scrimmage to the run. Pretty good call. Get a few more positive yards for the field goal attempt. And Mike Bellotti calls timeout again. Well, he's very authoritative about yeah. it. He's got a plan. There's no question about that. Meanwhile, Mason, look at Reese Lloyd. He's got a big smile. <laughs> Reese Lloyd will try to uh, change a trend for the Big Ten. Right now, the Big Ten 0-3 in bowl games. Northwestern, Michigan State, and Wisconsin have all lost in their postseason games. And Reese Lloyd trying to have something to do about changing that for the Minnesota Golden Gophers. 42-yard effort for the lead. He's missed from 52. The 6'1 junior from Dover, England. This to put the Gophers on top. It got tipped. But it lives through. It.
definitely got tipped early on. Keith Lewis, number 16, got a piece of it, but not enough. Man. Winston, isn't that what Gun Mason calls him? Winston Churchill? Yes. <laughs> well, as it covered the crossbar, it looked a little bit like a wounded duck. Mike Bellotti, who used two timeouts to preserve time on the clock and perhaps give Reese Lloyd time to calm down and not have to hurry out and fight the clock. But at this point now, here's what he's thinking. Is, is you know, we need a field goal to win. Jared Siegel's got some confidence right now. He's got a strong leg. If we can get a good return here and Kellen Clements can hit a couple plays, we'll have a chance. And that's why he used those timeouts to give his offense a little bit of time. Reese Lloyd will kick it off. 23 seconds to go. Here's the kick. They'll bring it out. Good At coverage. the 20-yard line. Nice cut. 19 seconds to go. That was a win for Minnesota because if he stays in the end zone, they get it at the 20, he runs it out, he uses some clock, and they still get to the 20. So Minnesota's defense with 80 yards of field to defend. First and 10 from the 20 with 19 seconds remaining. Minnesota is in a definite prevent defense. I mean, they've got a bunch of guys back at the 50-yard line, so they're going to give up some completions. Here's Clemens back. Let's it go. Intercepted. Picked off at the 35-yard line by Justin Isom. And that will do it. Paul Nixon got the pressure. It was only a three-man rush, but Paul Nixon was able to force Kelly Clemens to make a bad throw. Watch the pressure from number 47, Paul Nixon. He's going to get in and force Clemens to throw the ball back behind the receiver and ice him there for the interception. Kellen Clemens. Ouch. Glenn Mason, you bet. <laughs> and the Golden Gophers from Minnesota are going to wind up with a 10-win season. They won their first bowl game since 1985 last year when they beat Arkansas in the Music City Bowl. They make it two in a row this year in the Sun Bowl. Ten and three. Eight and five. Abdul Khalik, Kellen Clements sat together at lunch yesterday, the respect of two athletes who battled hard in this 70th Sun Bowl. And let's go down to Jill Arrington with a very happy Glenn Mason. That's right. Congratulations, Coach. Minnesota played a heck of a game today. What do you have to say about those Gophers? Well, I love Winston Churchill. I can tell you that. I <laughs> I told him to make it. I dropped trial, so I'm in a, I'm in a tough shape right now. But uh, you know, it's a great game. Oregon's well coached. It's a classic matchup: Pac-10 versus Big Ten. And we thought we started off today and let Michigan finish it up right in the Rose Bowl against Southern Cal. 